I love the new intro video. The team good, did a good job on that, Rob. Yeah, that's uh, Matthew and Alicia, our, mu- our in-house music prodigy, put together. He calls it the Mr. Tax's money jingle. <laughs> nice, looks I, good. I told him, I told him that uh, Merv Griffin is still being paid royalties on the Jeopardy jingle. That's the highest paid royalty music in history. Makes about forty million a year from that jingle <laughs> on royalties. So my my son Matthew went out and got a a keyboard synthesizer and some computer software, and now he's doing jingles. So here we have it. Uh, it's your second time on with us, Ryan. Yeah, it's good. It's like I, I feel I'm all uh, honored to come back for the repeat, right? I either did something really wrong the first time, I got to make amends, or I did something okay, and, uh, and I can do another one. Well, as, as long as the checks keep coming in there, we're we're happy, and <laughs> we're happy to get you back on. So what we're going to be doing moving forward, and uh, Ryan has graciously, um, I guess, volunteered his team that does training in-house with Phylogix, some of their training team in Ontario to come on once a month and show you the back end of Phylogix, how it works, etc. So we're we're looking forward to that, and especially today to kick it off with with the in-house expert. All right, perfect. Yeah, appreciate that, Rob. It's good to good to see you, and just good to, good to see you and have you get back. And I have to admit, like just the reflection you got on your screen, kind of looks like you got the bat signal showing behind you, right? So I'm I'm waiting for you to bring out that superhero cape and just kind of fly through and defeat crime everywhere. So uh, get the good use of lighting down there. It's one, one one thing that we do do here is the superhero stuff on the NOA orders. You know, some of them are are quite hard to get through with CRA now with tightening up their security. They used to tell us on the NOA orders uh, when we would submit, they would have a field for first name, and you could put a second name in uh, in that field if, if somebody did use a middle name and then last name. So they break it up, I guess, for all the IT uh, quirks out there into two fields, but first name. So you could have a space and an initial, et cetera. The, you, the error code used to come back, whether it was a first name error or last name. Now they just say, doesn't work. Good luck. <laughs> And so there's Jesse. Jesse puts on the superhero cape there from time to time. So our agenda is: uh, what are you going to learn? What What are they going to see today, Ryan? Just a little sneak. Yeah, quick, quick snippet. I want to talk a little bit about workflow. Um, so the, the one I talked about last month, uh, we talked about kind of gamification and, and consumer experience. I wanted to show how to start working in your workflow, how to think about the workflow, and how to start building automations that help you out to make that customer experience a little more easy a little more um, elegant yeah so stay tuned for that ryan's got about a 30 minute demo on workflow which uh we're looking forward to see as well because you, you have a few years experience in the industry yeah well remember he's had really really thick, thick luxurious hair right just come down and be like a rock star hair like bon jovi from the 80s but that's uh that's a little bit uh, a little bit in the past now the ron dugay the ron oh, dugay right. look yeah, yeah actually, like, uh, hockey, hockey hair, the, the best style of hockey hair ever, right? So. so intros, we'll have a quick intro, talk a little bit about what Jesse does on our team, a little bit about what we do here at Mr. Taxes, and then we always have a, a tax tip, joke, motivation, and we have a, a poll. I, I look forward to these polls every week because I have no idea what they poll, and they have some fun ones that, you know, we've asked them to keep it light because tax season is a little bit onerous at times, and then... You know, take what Ryan shows you here as as mortgage brokers and, you know, pick and choose what works for you, what doesn't work for you. Try it out. We always encourage everybody to try out what our our guests are coming on to teach. Last week, we had Brittany Hardy, who's formerly with uh, DLC. She was a former head of uh, national marketing, but she's gone out on her own showing tips. So that's available on our replays. So the replays are up on our YouTube channel. And remember, if you do like what you see on YouTube, remember to uh, like and subscribe. Okay, upcoming dates. So this is uh, webinar number 12 for the year. And again, we'll be bringing them to you every Wednesday, 9 a.m. Pacific, uh, 12 Central, and a little bit later on the East Coast for brokers that are out as far as Nova Scotia. A little bit about us. Uh, My name is Robert Stone, so I'll be here with you hopefully every week. Um, I'm with Mr. Taxes. We launched uh, what we call the Dollar Tax Club. It's a little marketing initiative, and we do have a mortgage broker affiliate program uh, so we do give out referrals. We're not a mortgage brokerage. We work with Phylogix specifically on the document side to help secure documents for your clients from Canada Revenue when your clients cannot access their own. 
And we've been around for quite a while. We started working on this mortgage broker program in 2008 when we first started retrieving NOAs online. At one point, we had 42 offices, mostly in Western Canada. We had seven in Ontario. Uh, we sold out uh, on that business in 2015. 2018, we, we came back with a vengeance. We had a three-year non-compete, and now we're on the Canadian Franchise Association. So if somebody out there is looking to you know, complement what they're doing on the mortgage side, if you have a mortgage brokerage and you're looking to franchise, it's a great lead generation. My name is Jesse. If you've been watching the last previous weeks, you, uh, you've heard my story a little bit. I've been an online entrepreneur since 2016. I've uh, done a lot of digital marketing, Facebook advertising, um, putting different systems, processes in place. Just essentially helping business owners make their life easier is what I really enjoy doing. Um, I've been fortunate enough to be represented as number one in sales for three different global companies that I'd represented through my career so far, built and led teams of thousands of people, put many different courses and trainings together. And a couple of years ago, I actually got my life insurance license, which is partially what led me here with Mr. Taxes and, and the Dollar Tax Club. Um, after meeting up with with Rob and the team to go through my own personal taxes and corporate taxes and just get everything caught up um, through some conversations that were had. Uh, he realized that my passions are in putting systems and processes together, um, but I was also life insurance licensed and uh, not really working with the company that I started with anymore. So there was a really good opportunity that opened up for a, a from a couple of different avenues with with Rob and the team, and uh, now I I help out with a lot of the the automation side of things, putting the affiliate programs together for the mortgage brokers, um, just making sure that everything's working smoothly and people can go through it seamlessly, and making sure that everything is just essentially working. And uh, then also on the life insurance side, I am now heading up the, the Alberta division for Mr. Insurance and, and the team and um, working with some of the brokers that are coming through and um, just really excited for the future. Things are starting to evolve now. What, what seemed like a big uphill climb for a few months is now starting to feel real. So that's me. Yeah, I guess the government... Uh paperwork, a lot of that stuff gets in the way sometimes. I guess uh, brokers can appreciate that as well. So Ryan, I'm not going to try and go through your accolades, you know, 20, I believe it's around 20 years with Finastra and Phylogix, you know, the yeah. old LLS and the whole evolution, but give the listeners, for those that are using Phylogix that don't know who Ryan Spence is, not to be confused with the other Spence, uh, but yeah, just let our, you know, let the listeners know who you are for those that haven't met you or don't know maybe who's behind the scenes at Phylogix. Sure. Yeah, I think one of the, the better jokes, of course, is uh, the last name is Spence. People say, oh, is that Spence Diamonds or Spence Shoes? And of course, the answer is no, and everyone loses interest right away. Um, so yeah, I've been around in the, in the broker space uh, for about 20 years. My, my actual degree, I have a degree in evolutionary theory. So Theoretically, I'm a biologist by trade, uh, but 20 years ago, evolutionary theory didn't pay as many bills as I was hoping. Um, so I migrated over to uh, to work in a smaller company called uh, LSS at the time with a buddy of mine, and uh, that's that's where it started. So the uh, last 20 years, I've been working in the broker space. And if you put the word mortgage and broker in the same sentence, it generally falls under my purview. I've been mean, dealing with the same clients for, for a couple of decades, and in some cases, I've dealt with the clients and now I am dealing with their clients' children who are also now a licensed broker. So a uh, pretty good history uh, through the industry and I've kind of seen all the various changes in technology that have come through. Certainly in the phylogics world, uh, we've been sort of forefront of technology for a long time. So um, it's very interesting to see how people have evolved and what the, the next thing we think is going to be and what, what the, the evolution of the transaction has been over the past uh, well, I don't know. Even even the last five years has been a big change. So, so what do what do you see? Let's say in the next, let's say the next year and the next five years. What are the two biggest changes? Uh, I think a lot of it's gonna, coming. Yeah, a lot of it's going to be the expectation of the consumer about what the transaction is. All right. So we think about the gamification of of any transaction. I've got a couple of slides I'll show you in a moment here. But that's one of the biggest things. It's because I'm not just competing against other mortgages. I'm competing against any transaction or anything the consumer does and the experience they're going to expect 
there's there's much more expecting that same type of experience, an easy transaction, regardless of the length or, or, or level of complexity. Uh, I want to kind of move through in a way that I can understand, I can adjust in, in chunks. I've got little sound bites of information rather than really large paragraphs. As my attention span starts to decrease, I need to see more things that allow me to make decisions within the attention span I can bring rather than spending a lot of time thinking about really complex stuff now. So um, certainly one of the, uh, the, the the bits we see is, you know, historically people have said, I, I want to be able to do a calculation that shows me something and I type in numbers and I do whatever I have to do to get an output. And increasingly people are saying, well, shouldn't I just be able to ask Siri, you know, how much is my mortgage payment gonna be next year? Right, and, and kind of get an answer from that point of view. So as we see that increase in um, the information available, consumers are also expecting that information coming back to them. That's right. Is yeah, uh, we we got a tool for that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> as, we, as we move from the from the, the clay tablet, uh, clay tablet to the the abacus uh, to the Excel spreadsheet calculator to the, I just want to ask the world um, and, and get an answer fairly quickly. So one of my uh, kind of hobbies. I like reading science fiction. So we think about science fiction as being what happens in the future. Uh, and I look at, you know, a hundred years from now or a thousand years from now. Um, there's definitely the idea that, you know, I, I really know nothing. I just ask the question. I get the answer I'm looking for because the system, the thing I'm asking the intranet or the whatever it becomes, just knows everything and can make predictions and, and tell me that information in a timely contextually aware and pertinent moment, right? So anyway, I think it's pretty cool, but that's what we're kind of seeing in the next little while is uh, is consumers looking for more information in a, just you can do some broad stuff and drill down quickly with a lot of complexity into here's the answer I'm looking for. How about the Ryan app? The Ryan yeah. app, hey Ryan, should I go variable or fixed? Yeah, and, and that, that's to be fair, like that, that's one of the questions. Like, what's and, you, and bang, you get the answer. Yeah, and so if I if I know who you are and I can know things about you, I can process information behind the scenes. These incredibly complex calculations and what if scenarios might just up, come come up and say, well, I'm three quarters fixed, I'm one quarter variable. Therefore, it's most likely that variable is going to be best for you, right? But the consumer doesn't need to know all of the details behind it. They don't just kind of want to know the answer without having to work through the mental calculations themselves or being ex or, or being told how the calculation works, right? So um, I think it's still important that people know that to be able to explain it, but increasingly consumers just want the end result without having to go through the entire process. Awesome, and uh, I know I know that Jesse's looking forward to today's presentation. We told him you're gonna be presenting on workflow. So we're, you know, we're amateurs in the mortgage space. We're experts in the insurance investment and tax space or accounting, but we're we're anxious to see the presentation. So you're gonna share your screen with us, Ryan? And yep, I got to share a couple screens here. So I'm gonna do a couple things. I've got a quick um, presentation here that I wanna do. Uh, I'm gonna do this one, a second here now, and I'll start my slideshow. Uh, so the phylogics have been around for a long time. And I kind of wanted to, to parallel the evolution of phylogics with the evolution of the transaction, and then talk a little bit more about kind of how that workflow comes through. So year, years ago, and for those that have been you know, around for 15 or 20 years in the industry, you'll remember phylogics back in the day, right? 2001, 2002, uh, we became phylogics kind of for the first time. And over time, we've been bought and sold. And we became uh, DNH and then... Uh, Vista Equity Partners bought us and partnered us with Mysis software that became Finastra. And then Finastra ultimately was still uh, kind of a global fintech entity, but in the broker space, that name wasn't really well known. People just kept calling us Phylogics. So ultimately after a little while and two or three marketing revisions, we just said, you know what, we'll just keep going with Phylogics. So after 20 years, we've kind of come full circle. And from the initial Phylogics logo and company, we've come around to be now Phylogics at Finastra Company. Now, Quick question, maybe uh, you might be able to give us the answer. Where did the name come from? Is with Phylogic? Yeah. yeah uh, really, the the, um, the the origin was financial logic, uh, right? So uh, if we're going to be a fintech company, how do we produce that, that sort of logical, um, sort of data-driven element with the financial institution? So Phylogic's ultimately was just a combination of uh, financial and logics. Uh, Finastra, again, Financial Star, uh, just saw that's how that came around. Um, so those are ones that, uh, it's always interesting to hear how that's, the names sort of come together and how the color schemes look and what they all mean. So anyway, a couple different uh, truncated names become our, our company and how we're known as. 
Okay, so uh, Ryan, take it away. You got about thirty minutes if you need us to pop on, but we'll keep an eye on the Q and A. So if anybody has questions, you know, pop them in there, and we'll keep an eye on those for you, Ryan, and we'll we'll cue cue those questions up at the end for you. Perfect, good stuff. See, so I'll try and get in about twenty minutes so we get uh, get some time for questions. But I'm going to start off with a little slide, and this is really just thinking about what workflow means to me today compared to what it meant fifteen years ago. So years and years ago, I'm using two thousand and six, kind of when we more or less have launched the current version of Biologics Expert. We changed from a bunch of old platforms to Biologics Expert. So 2006, the market was, was skyrocketing. People were, were writing business like Fury. And the process was generally fairly simple. A lot of people were still taking paper applications. You'd call the client, they'd tell you stuff. You'd submit the file. You might throw some documentation in there. You'd do some compliance and do some payroll. The, the life cycle is generally fairly easy. Was as much demand, was as much complexity. And you fast forward. 15 years and I still got that same thought bubble. I the consumer, hey, I want a mortgage. Well, the, the transaction fundamentally is, is kind of the same, right? I take an application and I want to get mortgage funding. But the steps and stages have become much more robust, much more uh, integrated with other things that I do. So I don't just take an application, fire it off and get the next one. I'm thinking about how do I collect documentation? Uh, how do I do CRM? How do I schedule my clients? How do I take these things that everyone is, is expecting and that can be time sensitive or can cause me administrative overload or I just have to do more things with less time? How do I make those things more effective and more efficient? And as technology over the years has, has increased, you know, consumers are looking for some increased experience. Right. So we think about what they want. Well, I want convenience. Right. I, in the last certainly a couple of years, I'm used to now working from home. I should be able to do anything I want anytime. My phone's got all the information in the world. My laptop has the same. I can be anywhere. You can be anywhere. We're changing information between these places. So consumers are looking for convenience. Right. How do I complete their transaction with a minimal effort to the consumer? Then they're looking for a user experience. Right. They're comparing the experience of dealing with you, the mortgage professional, with any possible experience I might have. Going to Amazon, uh, booking a WestJet, getting a hotel. Uh, when I think about what I used to do to, to work with a travel agent compared to what I do now, that experience is a little bit parallel, right? How do I get my clients to do the things that I'd like them to do that are going to be good for them with the most result to me with the least effort for them? So we think about that gamification of the transactional flow. And if I'm going to order a mortgage at a very high level, is it much different than me ordering a widget from Amazon? You know, I, I, I start a, a transaction, I order something, and then along the way I get updates and maybe I have to do things, but I'm told by Amazon, we've got your order. You know, your, your order's in the warehouse, your order's on the truck, your order's going to be delivered at three o'clock by a guy named Frank, your order's being delivered, here's a picture of it. So all the way along, I know what's happening in the transaction. The mortgage transaction, much the same. I may not understand all the details. I may not care quite as much, but as long as I'm kept notified and I had expectations that I could meet, then that's a good thing. It's an easier transaction than from the consumer's point of view. And then on the broker side, you do want to take a cost takeout, right? It, it costs you money. You've got assistance, you've got systems, you've got processes, you've got your own time. You want to have a most uh, efficient return on your investment of whatever that happens to be. So I'm looking to take cost out of the transaction. I want to reduce or ideally remove the cost of duplicate administrative function. Right? If I'm doing the same thing over and over again, but in and of itself is not providing some direct value, how can I shift that away to a place that I will have direct value? So what I want to do, I'm going to pop this up again at the end, but whenever you have questions, we've got our team, myself in the West, uh, Elton and Carly in Ontario and Elton in the Maritimes and Elise in Quebec. Do reach out to us. There's a link in the, the chat as well. You can go to finastercanada.com and I'll think that can bring you through to the same places. But any of the team, we're certainly willing to help people think through these things. So I'm going to pause for a second here. I'm just going to stop sharing. I'm going to share another screen just so we can walk through what I want to really talk about today, which is the workflow engine of, of Expert Pro. Uh, and uh, Robert, if that looks all good, you should see. That looks great. Yeah, we got the full screen. Okay, perfect. Pre-approval is at the top left-hand corner in my picture, looking all good, hiking in the mountains. So I'm working now on what we call Expert Pro. This is our newest version of Expert, and I'm not going to go through a whole demo of, of all this stuff. Uh, I know, Robert, you've got a, a video on your YouTube channel that talks about kind of high-level demo that we did the last time, and we've got other resources internally on the Phylogic side to help out agents if they're looking. So anyone who wants a full demo, reach out. Uh, you can watch the old video from on Robert's channel. 
or you know finastercanada.com there's links where you can find you know, how to contact us and you've got and more more importantly if you're a broker tuning in and you haven't used phylogix i know you have a a trial version correct yeah so and we'll, we'll, put that, we'll put that link up on the right side for uh, anybody tuning in that is not on phylogix that wants to give it a test drive perfect appreciate that thanks robert so what i want to talk about really today is one part of expert pro this is what we call boards so on the left hand side of my screen i've got boards and for those that are kind of used to trello it looks very much the same right i've got columns that define states of the life cycle and then i've got little cards inside each of these that i can move along to the various states i don't really want to talk about the client so much right now these cards aren't what i'm going to focus on today what i really like to focus on is the state right this is the workflow that i'm thinking about so every agent in the world has got a mental picture of what their ideal workflow is and then there's what their actual workflow is so as i'm working through a transaction with the client i kind of instinctively build something that i just know this is how i do the work like i take the client i get them somehow and then i'm going to start asking them questions i'm going to collect information i'm going to maybe collect documentation or i'm going to submit to a lender i'm going to do more things like a payroll and so forth so i have a life cycle that i just kind of follow and, and everyone's tends to be fairly similar, but they can be very different at a micro level between agent to agent, even in that broader context of being fairly similar. So my, my focus today is just kind of a, a more practical guide of how do I build my workflow inside Expert Pro? How do I make the changes that make it look good to me? And then how do I assign some automations to this workflow? Again, my goal is how do I gamify my transaction so that as I move along the stages and the steps, I can see that progress, I know where everything is. And then how do I remove some of the effort to send information out to people so that I don't have to remember to do it. That when I do an action, the system will then automatically do these other things on my behalf. So I'm gonna talk just a little bit about creating a board. So the board is just this list of what are the individual states and statuses that I wanna see through the life cycle of the transaction. And I can create a number of boards, right? And I've got a number of them here and they can all do different things. I've got, for example, a pre-approval board. I might have one for refinance and for purchase and for post-funding and whatever it is that I think is important to me. I can have one really big board that has lots of stuff on it, or I can have several boards, each that kind of deal with a subset of the transactional flow. And I might share these boards with different people in my brokerage, my assistant, my team, and so forth. So while there's a lot of things you can do, I really wanna focus just on the idea of how do I build one board? How do I add in things that make sense along my workflow? So I have four things in here I've created. Uh, there's a pretty basic stuff, right? I've got my clients being referred to me, I've contacted them, I've scheduled some appointment, and they've initiated a transaction. And that's pretty basic and, and doesn't really take you really down the level of transaction. So this is a nice starting point, but doesn't maybe give me as much stuff as I'd like. So let's talk about how I add statuses to the boards and how I change what those statuses are called. So I've got a client and I wanna make sure that I move them through my life cycle and these statuses are, are gonna drive me, uh, these statuses are identified as kind of the important bits of the life cycle. So anything I wanna do, I can use an action. So my top right hand corner, I can add an action. I can create a new board, I can delete a board, but really what I want to do is focus on working on this board, the pre-approvals board, and I'm going to add a new status. So I can create a new status, and I'm going to call this status submitted for approval. I've got the opportunity to, to do some things. I can turn off some notifications. I can keep these things uh, idle, or I can show notification if they're being idle for a day or two. So I'm not going to mute automations. I want to know what's happening, right? Notifications are things have happened. Please tell someone. And I, that's what I want. I want those things to happen. Muting automations. Again, no, I want to keep them live. I want the automations to happen because that's what I'm using to reduce my administrative burden, my duplicate effort. It's the thing that allows me to send notifications out to somebody to do a thing or just to have information about the state of where things are. And this idle shading, this just says, if I've got a client that's been in this board or this column in this board for more than a day or more than three days, for example, I'm just gonna shade this tile a different color so it pops out to me. So I can say, hey, this thing has been sitting here for a while, maybe I should do something about it. Or at least I should acknowledge that, yeah, I, I have to think about it, I've gotta make sure I haven't missed something. 
So I'm going to create a status. And that status is going to be applied on the board. And you can see now at the right hand side, I've got a new submitted for approval. And you know, submitted for approval, that's pretty good. I can keep moving through the life cycle and create new statuses and they'll keep being applied to the right hand side. So submitted for approval might be one I'd like to think about. And then I'll create a new status that says, uh, you know, document collection. Again, same thing. I'll add some, some shading in here if I need a couple days. I've got document collection. Fair enough. Now, maybe I don't need scheduled as a as a as uh, an edit. <clears throat> so scheduled is one that I don't think I really need. Between first contact and initiated, scheduled seems to be a bit of a duplicate. Right? There's no real effort for that. I maybe thought I needed to use it originally, but after some time, I realize I don't. So if I click on my little wheel icon here, I can go through, so I'm gonna hide this at the bottom so you can see it, but I can remove this status, or potentially I could edit some of the portions of this status. But I'm just gonna get rid of this one. Scheduled isn't one that I need to have. So I've got a couple statuses now. I've got referred and I've got a first contact, and this might mean something different to me. The client's just arrived, I've reached out to them. I've submitted to approval, I've got document collection, and I may move through a few other statuses. So I'm gonna show you another board in a moment that's kind of a bit more robust, but I just want to get you the idea of how do I physically put these statuses in? And if I want to change where these statuses are, how do I do so? So let's just say I wanna move my initiated status a bit to the left. I think referred, then initiated, then first contact's a better way to go. So again, if I click on my little wheel icon, I can move that status and clicking to the left, simply moves it over this, to the right side, uh, to the left side a bit more. And if I click on the wheel again, that takes it back to neutral and keeps me in place. Now I might also wanna change the name of this status. And for a little hit, this little uh, pen icon, I'll just click over to the right here. I'm gonna say referred, I'm gonna say interview scheduled. Maybe that's what I like to do. All right, whatever the thing is, I feel is gonna be important. And again, a quick little check mark, and I've updated the status. So now I'm migrating through my workflow. And over time, you may find you make changes to this. Usually when people first come into the system, their boards tend to be uh, fairly broad, right? Because I have a, a workflow I've mentally got in my mind, but putting that down into paper and kind of writing down specifically at what stage and what step I want to do things can be a little bit more challenging. That's one thing we always encourage people to do is spend some time thinking about what that workflow is. What, what do you actually do? And make a comparison to, well, should I do it that way? What would I really like to do? If I could make, you know, if I'm like the, the fairy godmother of Cinderella, if I wave my magic wand, what is the ideal state? Not thinking about what I have to do and where and how, but just what is my ideal state? What are the things that I think are really important in this transactional flow with, the, with this particular client? Over time, those generally become more robust and more granular as you realize, yeah, this is a nice intermediary stage or I'm gonna make a little more fine control. So as I've worked through and I've built up my board and I'm changing what those boards are and changing the status locations and adding new statuses, I can also do automations. And this is kind of the second half of how do I really make these boards work well? On my left-hand side, I've got what's called view automations. So in this automations, I have a couple different choices. I can look at automations on my board and I'm only gonna focus on the board level for today. There's a couple other choices, but those are things for another day. In my board level, I have a couple options. I can create automations that happen when I do something, or I can make automations that happen when anybody does something. And that action is me dragging those little consumer tile cards from status to status. So as I move my tiles from spot to spot on the board, actions can happen based on what I've done. So I typically say I want these to be triggerable by any board member. And what that really means is if I have a team, my team's probably all working together, we've got a very defined process internally. So I want anybody who's working with this client to be able to move that client along so that anybody can see what's happening and that client experience is, is kind of universal regardless of which one of us does the action, the client should always receive the same type of experience. So I can create automations. Right, so right now, I'm gonna create a new automation. I've got a couple choices. When a client profile is changed or when a client profile is created. So my first step, there's gonna be a few things that pop up. I've got choices to make. This trigger is gonna be 
well, which one of these things is going to be the case? Is it when my profile is created or when my status is changed? Let's go with client profile created. So this just says, when I add a new client profile, a new tile on a particular board, I'll say my pre-approvals board, just because that's what I'm working with, I want to do an action. And we've got a number of actions. We can send a request package. We can send emails to clients. We can do an activity. I've got capacity to be able to synchronize my email, my Gmail, my Outlook within the pro world. So sending emails to clients can happen automatically. And I might say, great, I want to send an email out to a client that says, thanks for becoming part of my client base. Here's what I want to do. And I'll show you what that looks like in a moment. But really, a first one is just a nice thing that says, I'm going to create a little checklist. I'm going to checklist. Oops, I'm going to actually start to create an activity because I want to assign it to somebody. So I'm going to create an activity that's scheduled for immediately. So my client's created. It's going to be 7 a.m. and it's going to be assigned to somebody. Right? So I'm going to assign it to uh, myself or I could assign it to my assistant, Carly, or I could just assign it to Carly, whatever the case may be. I'm assigning it to someone that says, you need to do this thing. So Carly is going to get a, a, an automation. It's going to appear in the system. She's going to get an email that says, I want you to do these things. And this could be, you know, order a Starbucks card. Uh, it could be, you know, um, it's a new client. So we want to enter them in the draw. Whatever you feel is appropriate, right? This is just what happens when I first see a new client. You might also do something like automatically send an email out to the client, for example. But I can do a simple one just to start. So I'm going to save that, that automation. And now, great. As I go back to my board, if I enter a new client, let's go enter a new client now. We're going to create a new client. We're going to call this, uh, we'll call this Robert Taxes because that's a good one to do for today. I'll spell taxes correctly. I will actually learn how to type better. Uh, I can provide a, you know, kind of a, a renewer if I need, but I can create quickly create a new profile. So it's going to be created on a new profile. Fantastic. It's in that referred section. Also, let me go back to my board now and say, ah, I've created a new tile. Oops. There we go. And you can see that I've created a new tile. This now has some activities. This little green bell icon says we have actions that need to happen. So immediately, Carly's going to get an email that says, hey, please do these things. If I click on my little bell icon, it will give the, the actions that we need to do. I've got to order them the Starbucks card, and we've got to enter them in the draw, right? And we've got to do other activities as well. So as I make these automations, as I move my tiles from column to column, I'll move Tim over from referred to interview scheduled, and as I move Tim to first contact and submitted to approval, that's the action that triggers whatever automations I have built in to my system. So as I work through those boards and as I create new automations, I can be increasing more granular. Should I modify what happens when this is submitted? Do I want to email Tim and also set up an activity for Carly, my assistant, or set up something that I should do or send a request package to the client to collect documentation from them? So all these things become things that are easy to do as you get more familiar with setting up that workflow. That's what I wanted to kind of talk about today. I'm going to show a couple examples of other automations I've built just so you can see what's possible. Uh, so when you first dive into the system, you've got some idea of, hey, I could, I could do that too. So quick question, Ryan. Uh, somebody comes in, broker and client doesn't have their notices of assessment or past tax documents. And then we'll follow up a little bit later showing what we provide to you uh, in, in the package. Yeah, absolutely. So you might have one, uh, for example, let's say you're going to go with the Robert taxes. You might have an automation built that says, listen, when I first talk to the client, I may not know too much about, them, right? So as I do that first interview, maybe I've got that interview scheduled. One of my auto, one of my actions is going to be ensure that you ask for, um, uh, to see if we need NOAs or T4s. You could set up an email that says, Listen, I'm going to automatically send you a notification. These are the things that you're going to see from us, right? You're going to get a request to uh, 
e-sign a document that's going to allow us to, to get your, your tax documents, your NOAs, your T4s from CRA. Uh, you're going to get a request that we need these other documents as well, the well was certificate, an employment letter. So you can set up these automations that will go to the client that will say, here's what we need from you. Here's what you should expect so that you can meet that behavior. So just as I was talking about, so that Amazon uh, experience, it says, you know, we've got your order, you know, the order's in the warehouse, it's in a truck, this is what you should expect and when. You can also build those same type of notifications that go out automatically that say, this is what you expect. And if there's gonna be a call to action, we're gonna send you something separately that allows you to do this thing. So you're always trying to set that expectation for the client so they know what's gonna happen, so whenever something happens, they were expecting it and think, oh yeah, I can do that. I knew it was going to happen. It's going to come to me. I'm going to do this thing. And then when they achieve it, that's it. They've received some information. They've received a call to action. They do the action and then they move on to the next step. So they don't necessarily have to think about all the complexity behind the scenes. They may not care about how that documentation flow actually comes. They just know I'm going to get an email that I have to e-sign and that email is going to let, you know, Robert, for example, uh, my agent, pull my my tax documents. I don't have to do it. That's a big benefit. So I look at my automation. And I'm going to talk about one. I've got a couple different boards here and these automations are on a few different boards. But I've got one, for example, that talks about when I have a client first come to me and I add them to my board, this is the first time I've talked to them. Maybe it's a new application. Maybe I'm up on the golf course. Whatever the case is, I've got a new client that has come to me. I add them to my board and maybe the first thing I do is I just want to send them an email that says, great, thanks. I've got your application. Here's what you should expect from me. And this, this email is an automatic email that will come out. And in my case, I've built this email to say, here's what to expect. I would like you to click on this link to schedule on my calendar a time when we can talk. You can read more about it. You can watch this video. This will explain my process. Then we do talk. You'll know what I look like. You'll understand what's going on. I've given you information ahead of time so that when the consumer comes to you that first uh, for that first appointment, they've learned about you. They know what to expect. They've scheduled an appointment in your calendar where you've said, yep, I'm going to be available in these times. They've picked a time that makes that works for you. They have a whole bunch of information about you. They've done work that you need. You can see them in your calendar when you, when you uh, join into it. And that's just an automatic email that comes out as soon as you do the action of adding that client. So rather than me having to build that email every time, I can just have this email go out automatically, see the client, do self-serving actions, be able to understand more about me. So when I come to that first meeting, we've maybe dispensed with 15, 20 minutes of back and forth thinking about when should we meet and can we meet over here? What about me? Here's me, here's what I do, what do you do? These are all things that they can do on their time and they come to you much more prepared. You might also put in these type of emails. Hey, I'm going to need these kind of documents. I'm going to need things from you. And as I build out my boards and I think about my process, do I send a different email to a client if they're doing a refinance versus an approval uh, or uh, sorry, doing a, a refinance versus a purchase? an approval versus a pre-approval. And those emails can be tailored specifically to that particular client type. So I'm going to deliver information for that client that's pertinent to what they do because I've been very good at building out strong processes along any possible workflow that I might see the client in. And then once I add them to that workflow path, as I move them along, they just get the right information for their path at the right stage. So I'm going to pause here because I don't want to go too far. I know I'm, I'm probably running running long on time already, but that is really what I want to talk about today. Thinking about your workflow, thinking about how you start to build your own, and then actually how to physically put them into the system so that you can see what it looks like. And I'll just skip over to one that's a bit more robust right now. Uh, I've got a, a series of, of uh, boards, but here's another board that's useful, right? This is kind of built off some live uh, brokers in the world that says, here's their process. Like, this is what they do. These successful brokers have been around for many years, have spent time refining their process, and they've had it in you know file folders and folders on their computer, uh, file, you know, file, uh, stages on their, their handwritten notes. They're just now migrating these to an electronic process. So these uh, boards can be much more complex if you like them to be. Again, the key bit is to start building them and move towards that complexity and that granularity.
Start simple. I, I like the fact that some of those letters are customizable. Uh, how many templates do you have, do you know offhand, in the system for each potential scenario? Yeah, basically an un unlimited amount, right? So you can write whatever you like. Uh, when we think about marketing as a template, I'll, I'll just zip over here to show you. We have kind of rebuilt MailChimp. Um, so there are you know, kind of hordes of templates you can use and you can customize uh, that you can copy and add your own logos and your own language and your own formatting. So there are li literally tons of them. Um, I'm not sure what the number is, but it's going to be in the matter of hundreds uh, that exist for you know, kind of a variety of, of, um, of topics that you might want to call out. And then there's, there's nothing that says you can't just write an email that says anything at any point. You could have dozens or hundreds of templates that you've put out as well with even minor variations to correspond to many boards and potentially many statuses you have on those boards. So the, the sky is kind of the limit in this case. Um, we always say, again, to Robert's point of view, like start small, right? Don't try and boil the ocean is one of my, my colleagues' uh, favorite expressions. Start small, you know, as you see opportunity to add or modify, that's where you start changing. Um, if you're a, a fan of professional cycling, which, which I happen to be, there's a, a man named Dave, Dave Brailsford, and he's a UK cycling coach. Uh, he was the, the principal for a team called Team Sky in the UK, and they did they won lots of Tours of France's, and they, they did very, very well. And his idea was the rule of incremental gains, right? This is a sport where you know, the Tour de France has won after three and a half thousand kilometers of racing, over you know 100 hours of racing the margin of victory can be 14 seconds or 15 seconds or, or a minute is a, is a long lead uh, so if i can produce even a small incremental gain out a tenth of a percent or a 15th or a way even one percent that may be enough to make me win the tour because i've just done this one little thing that if i build on it and keep building on more one little things i ultimately have this tremendous success so I always think of that rule of, of incremental gains as being one that is highly practical in this position because these incremental gains are you making minor changes to that workflow, making minor changes to your boards, making some additions or, or tweaks to those automations that over time, you know, basically allow you to win. Yeah, Brian Tracy says it doesn't matter if you win by a nose or a length or a, what is it, a, a mile, win by a mile, Winner always gets 10 times more than second place. Yeah, exactly. Right. So we do see brokers that come in and they start to think about it and, and they start actively thinking about that. Uh, you're working kind of on your business, not in your business is another good one. We've, I'm sure we have a lot of catchphrases. We've all, all been to so many conferences over the years that there's got to be you know a dozen catchphrases that we could spat out. But they all they are kind of the same thing, which is pay attention, look for that constant improvement see what you're doing repeatedly, see if you could automate some of that process so you could take it off your lap, give it to someone else, give it to the system so that you can then use your time for its highest and best use, which is providing trusted advice to your clients, building those relationships, finding new clients. Again, you're not spend, you're not paid for your incredible typing skills. You are very much you know, paid on, can I build more client relationships? Can I bring in more business? And if I can reduce you know, the, the touch points for a particular client on Administrivia by five minutes uh, a client. If I'm doing 10 clients a week, you know, that's an hour I've saved just on not having a couple, type a couple emails. If I am, you know, thinking about my business planning, what is the, the revenue per hour I need to achieve to get to my larger business goals? You know, these numbers tend to be $250, $300 an hour of, of kind of revenue time. If I can save an hour, Mentally, that's two fifty, three hundred dollars in revenue time. I can reapply that elsewhere. So again, that's what I'm looking for. If I can save five minutes a client, do I save an hour a week, four hours a month? Like all of a sudden, I'm, I'm saving myself days of time over the course of the of the year. And we have we have a similar in house. We use the CRM, so the process is the same on the tax cycle. You know, and I'm thinking the duration is about the same amount of time. We have documents we have to collect from the client. Uh, they all fit into different scenarios, you know, some self-employed, some corporations, even those who are not self-employed, different scenarios. And we categorize it something like this, but, you know, this is the first time we've actually had a preview of the back end of Phylogix, you know, even though we've been working together for just over a year now. Yeah, that's very, I, I always point out too, like some of the stuff becomes very easy, right? If I, as an, as an agent, I mark, uh, a task for my assistant that says, I need you to order an NOA, right? The, the assistant can get the email, say, great, I've got to order an NOA for that client. 
I can go into that particular client. I'll go into one uh, sort of by example here. I can go into a, an application, and it's very easy to do, right? Order the application or order the NOA. I go into the application side. I pick on the action button at the top right hand corner. I request an NOA, and off it goes, right? I'm working through the various tags and tiles. But in the space of I need to order this, I've got what maybe 10 or 15 seconds of, of kind of work. It generates the uh, the NOA document. Uh, I won't actually send one off here, but you'll see the render, and then off it goes to the uh, to the consumer, and they they fill it in, and it comes back into the document side. Right? You can you can send as many orders as you want, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair. Rene, yeah, that's right. Rene may not like it so much, but and listen, if, if if it works and it's good for the agents, that's good. But again, the whole point is if I can make this an easy and automated process, where I just have to say, great, send this request out to make it happen. You know, to my assistant, 10 seconds later, that request can be out to the client, all because I've dragged this one box from one spot to another on a, on a, on a workflow. And our, our service uh, time frame is 30 minutes. Once the clients do sign the documents, that order comes into our desk. We supply those documents back to the broker uh, within 30 minutes. And we have about a 92% uh, success rate on that 30 minute window sometimes there's things beyond our control like name issues with cra etc but that that's our responsibility in the whole process we're a, we're one of the spokes in the wheel yeah uh, exactly so again i know I'm, I'm i'm pushing up on uh my my time probably gone over the time so i'll, I'll stop my stop my sharing at this point and and then i'll dive back in and robert you can you can take it there from here yeah let's let's jump back on the slides we you know we have a few things that people want to tune in and and catch every week where are we we're on the 30th already of march 2022 so that's uh the presentation tax tip you know if you want to end personal income tax it's been around since 1917 i guess the war times measures act that came in and it's still around one of the ways to get rid of personal income tax is to incorporate. You know, most of the corporations we work with, there's a lot of provisions in the Income Tax Act where you can draw your money out of the corporation tax free. Reach out to us. We can help with all that, especially if you're a mortgage broker that is incorporated. And I know that mortgage brokers are able to incorporate in most provinces. Uh, reach out to your, you know, your brokerage manager or managing brokers, sorry, or the association in your province or region, they'll let you know whether or not you can incorporate. A joke of the day, I can help you find your inner child, but I can't help you claim him as a dependent at tax time. You know, you cannot claim people that aren't dependents, but there's a lot of tax tips uh, that we put out every week. Watch for them on social media. And again, we're the side hustle for your side hustle. If you're a mortgage broker looking to get more leads, looking for more traction on social media, Jesse helps help put our affiliate program together reach out to the link there on the bottom of the screen we'll just move the uh, images up here so you can see that dollar tax club.ca forward slash affiliates that is our paid public service announcement for the week ryan so uh questions i i know i i fielded one there for somebody um you know can you customize those templates and the answer is yes and there's a lot of different templates in there yeah, uh, indeed. We've got, uh, for those interested too, um, I will throw in, sorry, I just realized I hadn't done that. Uh, I've got some links in here that I can just quickly throw in about. Yes, Ryan's going to go into the chat area. I'm not sure if he, uh, oh, there he is. He's back. Yeah, we put a link for the sign up for the, it's in there in the chat area. Uh, if you want to sign up for the trial on Phylogix, Um if you're on the trial and you might want to move up to uh, Expert Pro, uh, reach out. Yeah, absolutely. I just put it in the chat just about of a number of videos of how to. So we've got a whole bunch of stuff uh, that are kind of one or two minute videos that, to give you a quick high level view of these. And again, the same thing as you're going through, you know, you do a little bit of practice. It makes it easier as you build a little bit. You get more confidence. You build more complexity. Uh, you build a strong foundation. that's easier to, to build out from there. So. And if you're looking for the links, they will be in the uh, lower section on YouTube. If you're watching this on YouTube on the replay. Uh, those will be in the comments below. And remember, if you're watching on YouTube, remember to subscribe and like these videos to watch more from Phylogix. So quote of the day, this guy, we put this out before the uh, Oscars on the weekend because Will Smith took a uh, a swing at, who who did he take a oh, swing Chris, at? Chris Rock got the- Chris got Rock, the, yeah. The, 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 the hand of Will, right? So 
So I, I boxed for 15 years. I had 152 fights, and uh, Will Smith actually played Ali, I think, in a movie. You'd think he would have taken a better shot than that if he really wanted to hurt <laughs> Chris Rock. But I, I know there was some remorse after, and he did put out an apology. So it's just ironic. This this slide was put together before that. So this is one of those one in a million. I, I like the thing that you, you've got your thumb on the zeitgeist of the culture, right? You were just, you're preparing to be a, a, a thought leader here. So that was just a, a precept, right? Yeah, 11th hour switch there. But no, they, they put this up. I know that we've had a few Will Smith. And I think that's, you know, one one fault in his entire career. I think he'll recover from it and move forward. You know, I think those memes won't last long online, but uh, I'm just waiting for Chris Rock to come out and, and do his next stand-up show, do a whole segment on that, uh, on the Oscars. I, I know he's going to do something like that because he, he'll make light of it. That's his style. One of the things we do for clients is, or for potential clients, so mortgage brokers, if you're on our affiliate program, uh, we do a comprehensive financial review. We go back over the last 12 years of clients' tax documents. We have a 101-point checklist that we go through. It's like doing a mortgage review on a previous mortgage or, or a renewal. We do the same thing on the tax side. And you can use this as lead generation if you're a mortgage broker wanting to get on our, get in on our affiliate program. And this is something that Jesse's put together. Jesse might be able to elaborate a little bit on the affiliate program before we uh, get ready to sign off. Yeah, I mean, if you're not set up with the uh, affiliate program for Dollar Tax Club, I would definitely check it out. Um, go go through it for yourself. See if you come up with any kind of ideas to utilize the, the program as a lead generation tool. I know for me personally, I've thought of a few different avenues that could go to help generate leads and just build good rapport with with your customers and your clients and and um, there's a few different ways that you can do it and you know when you get happy clients they usually send their friends and family to you as well so it's not only generating a lead but it could be generating referrals off of that lead as well so and remember in the in the chat area there is a uh, free trial link to get on Phylogix to give it a, a test run and uh, you know if you need to reach out uh, to Phylogix. Uh, all those contacts will be in the comments area. And Q&A, Ryan, thanks for hanging out for the whole hour. Just right, yeah, so I appreciate that, guys. Good to see you again. We uh, look forward to the next one. Yeah, so uh, Ryan, any ideas what, I know we've just chatted about this over the past week or so, but maybe something that listeners can expect when Phylogix comes on to pre present again next month. Yeah, I think next, so next month, I think probably the talk was going to be making campaigns. So we think about the, the boards and sort of transactional flow, but how do I do things behind the scenes that may be post-funding uh, or just bringing them on that are not active parts of the transaction, but just a drip of information pertinent to the client while they're doing a transaction that's not specifically transaction related. So again, marketing campaigns, and that would be the focus of the next one. And that can all be done inside the Phylogics, Phylogics platform. Correct. That's right. Yeah, it'll be practical. How do I start a, how do I create a, a campaign? How do I get people in? How do I get people out? And then how do I actually build the stages of those campaigns? Awesome. q and I'm going into the chat area. Not a lot of questions today. I know we got a few brokers on. We always try and give a shout out to whoever's on. Uh, Daryl Alexander and Daryl. Uh, let's see. Daryl's with uh, Mortgage Design Group. Uh, thanks for tuning in, Daryl. If any of the brokers have any questions before Ryan goes, otherwise we'll get it wrapped up here pretty quick. What's coming up, Jesse, on our end? Oh, we got a lot. We got a lot in the pipeline, a lot in the works. Um, I know we've just wrapped up our webinar that we've been working on for um, for mortgage brokers and the affiliate program that we are launching. Limited seats available. Reach out to Mr. Taxes if you're interested in getting a first jump on it. So dollartaxclub.ca forward slash mortgage. Mortgage. Yeah. Mortgage. That is it. That's the key word. Okay, guys, that's it for another week. Another successful webinar bringing you loads of content. And uh, thanks, Ryan, for giving us a sneak preview into the back end of Phylogix and how it works. And we're looking forward to the next one. Good stuff. Excellent. Thanks, everybody. See you again next time.